Hey everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Larry Smith Outdoors. Uh, Larry is unavailable this week, so I am your guest host, Adam Christensen, Adrenaline Angling Guide Service. We are here today on Pool 8 of the Mississippi River. Uh, we are after some springtime jumbo perch. We've been getting into some absolute giants. Uh, my clients every day have caught their personal best, and uh, it's going to be a great day. What we're doing and where we're finding some of these fish at is in traditional wintering areas where we would find them during the ice season. Uh, a lot of times these fish will go to the dam in the spring, but due to the low water levels this year and no snow and no ice to melt really anywhere, uh, we've been finding them, they've been ready to spawn right where they spent their whole winter at. So, Dom Flock, you ready to catch them today? I am. This is my first day out on the Mississippi this year, so let's make her a good one. Stay tuned. Hang on to your heinies. No, nope, not really. Be a perfect eater. First fish of the morning. Not the giant we're after, but if you were looking for a few to eat, those are your good eaters right there. Don't mind me, I've had four bites already, Dom. Just trying to save the world one perch at a time here. Dude, no, not good. Not what we're after here. It's all right, we'll get the next one. Another one of them perfect eater size. Beautiful. Gonna let that one go. Lay your eggs. I just about doubled there. Missed one on my drop shot, and as soon as I did, the bobber went. Simple drop shot rig. Super, super lightweight in here, because <coughs> we're shallow and weedy. Very important to uh, always match your sinker size on your drop shot to the kind of current you're dealing with. In here, it's none, so we run super light, but that is uh, the difference if you're too heavy it nails that bait down too much. You want it to really just look natural in the water. Just a little guy. Nice little male. Let him go to do his thing. That oh, was pretty much stonewalled. Good one, Dom? No. Not a bad one. Man, not really. Pretty cookie cutter eaters so far. Another one that spawned out on the drop shot. Beautiful fish. So I actually uh, just switched to a crawler here. Uh, it's only 8.15 right now in the morning. And uh, sometimes I notice right away in the morning that uh, when they're a little bit sluggish, they would rather have a crawler, a little bit easier meal. They don't want to chase the manure around. So do not do not be afraid to uh, try a crawler right away in the morning and uh, go ahead and switch to a middle once it gets a little hot and heavy later in the afternoon. Uh, that can be hugely, hugely effective. In the springtime on the Mississippi River, I always have rosies, regular minnows, crawlers, red worms in the boat, always. You don't wanna be the guy sitting in a boat watching your buddies rail on them a couple boats over um, because they've got crawlers and you don't. So make sure you always got them with you. Nat. Dom, Nat. Beautiful Mississippi River perch. They come bigger, but that is a dandy. That's a, I don't know, 11 and a half probably. Beautiful fish. 
Let's let her go to get bigger and get some more. See you, girl. That is what we're after there. You want the net? Oh, yeah. About a 12, 12 and a quarter. Beautiful. Look at the colors on these Mississippi River perch. Let's see what Dom's got here, boys. Good one, buddy? Yeah. Heater. Oh yeah, nice fish. Oh, drop mine. Now Dom. Adam. I see a little bit of a problem when I look at yours compared to mine. It's not as big. It's not as big. Some guys just can't catch the big no. ones, you know? But nonetheless, beautiful fish. Let's get a little double release shot. Get these girls heading home. See you later. Back at it. Nice cedar. Oh, well, another one. We're not gonna say too much about this one because there ain't a whole lot to say. See you later. Hey guys, so just something I wanna talk about is drop shot again. The reason the drop shot is so effective for these perch is if you were to just throw a jig head, it's laying down on the bottom, in the mud, in the weeds. <clears throat> they can't see it because fish's eyes are on the top of their head, they're always looking up. So with the jig, they just can't see it that well. What this drop shot does is your weight's on bottom and it allows that hook and bait, whether it's a minnow or a crawler or a plastic or whatever it may be, to come through the water nice and high. So if your perch is sitting right here with their belly on the bottom, right in this area, it's boom, right there in their face. And another important thing about drop shot too is, <clears throat> we've shown the knot on here several times in the past, um, but another thing is weight. That obviously is just a standard split shot, not a drop shot weight. Don't be afraid to do that. In these backwater areas like we're fishing today, you don't need a ton of weight and a single size BB split shot will get you down just fine. You wanna go as light as possible for when you're dragging through those weeds. You got one? Yeah. Double blue. Mine's a good one, dude. It is a good one. I got a bluegill. You do got a bluegill. You don't want a bluegill. Another beautiful one. We're still, uh, we're still looking for that first one in the morning in that th 13, 14 inch range. We've been getting a lot of them, but yesterday was so warm that a lot of these big girls are actively spawning right now. So, and more eaters are moving up and uh, we're all right with that. We'll take them like that all day, any day. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we want. That is a nice fish there, buddy. Sure. Dom was staring at me, watching what I was doing. And he finally figured her out. It's a fatty there. That is a toad. That is what we want. That's what the Mississippi's all about right there, ladies and gentlemen. And you know what? That's only a 12, 12, inch. 12 and a half inch fish. Yeah. But the belly on these, just look at that. That big old girl. Oh, not as good as I thought. Just a good eater. I just lost my worm. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? <laughs> Another perfect eating size right there. Those nine, ten inchers are just, they fry up beautifully. See you, girl. Ever since we made that switch to crawlers, it's been pretty much every cast. They were a little finicky on the minnows. We got a couple on it, but they weren't, definitely ca like the crawlers. weren't catching them the way we wanted to. So uh, we switched to crawlers and been very, very productive so far. And you gotta make sure you're always leaving some tail like that hang off too. So it's coming through the water real natural. Now, what I'm wondering right now is what do you guys think Larry is catching right now? If I was a betting man, I bet you he's on some of them saltwater sheephead, since he's so good at catching sheephead. <laughs> That's my guess. Meanwhile. Oh my, oh look at that! Oh my gosh! Oh, he's gonna go, he's going around the bridge! Whew. 
Hey guys, we're here for the Mike's Country Meats tip of the week, the finest jerky on the planet. And uh, my tip of the week this week is gonna be that if you are uh, struggling to locate these perch this year on the river outside of the dams, don't be afraid to check where you're catching them ice fishing. These fish have not left. The main reason these perch go up to the dams is they're seeking out that flow. Well, we don't have that this year. There is no flow, there's no ice, there's no snow to melt anywhere. <clears throat> It's been a goofy, goofy year. We've had to make a lot of adjustments, obviously, with the short ice season. Um, Perch's whole MO is they don't want to be in the current any more than they have to be, so they try and get out of the current. Well, a north-facing bay allows them to get out of the current, and it's where all their food is as well. There's tons of bug larvae up here that they can dig up out of the shallow mud and weeds, uh, snails, wigglers, mayfly larvae, uh, shad, baby bluegills, baby largemouths, you name it, their food's here. Why would they leave if they don't have to? You gotta think outside the box and you have to understand the entire ecosystem and how it all works together to understand how to get on these bites. Mike's Country Meats, the finest jerky on the planet. We are gonna try and get one on the finest jerky on the planet. Because you know, it's such good jerky that we don't just deserve it, the perch deserve to taste how incredible this is. Honey barbecue, we'll see if they like it. Are you fishing with jerky? No, give me them. <laughs> to keep them in a lawn first. We're gonna do it. This is dedication here. I mean, we got time. <clears throat> We're gonna get one. Keep them buttoned. Uh <laughs> Jerky. <laughs> Nothing but jerky. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's what we're that's after. That's what we want. That is what we're after right there, buddy. Nice job, Dom. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's 13 plus. That a boy. That's what we come here for, right? there god i never get sick of seeing them like that yeah. no matter how many big ones i see you never ever get sick of it nice job buddy yeah, thank you sir <clears throat> let her go and do her thing net net you're on the net max that's a stud you went back to a crawler i went back to a crawler you didn't tell me that you sneaky son of a gun, you. It's, it's almost like the days when you had a Harley and you were waving to the guy on a bike. You see another warrior on the water, you just get a good feel. First class all the way from the people that ride them to the people that make them. They do such a nice job with communication. They'll pick up the phone anytime. It's, it's really almost a friendship. You could be in any state, and when somebody with a warrior drives by you, you get that honk, that beep. You're truly part of a family, and there's nothing like it. Introducing Forever Barnwood. Transform your space with the warmth and character of a genuine barnwood look. Forever Barnwood offers over 200 authentic barnwood products. We are commercial and food safe. Our products are available in unlimited quantities while still providing the consistency you need to complete large projects. All of this while still looking like it came out of a hundred year old barn. Forever Barnwood, bring the history inside. Hey everybody, I am back and I wanna thank our good friend Adam Christensen from Adrenaline Angling Guide Service for taking over for me this week. I was in Florida doing some tarpon fishing, but guess what? Back from Florida, back in the truck, and we're heading up to Melrose, Minnesota to go see our good friends over at Warrior Boats. Hey everybody, today we're down here in Warrior Boats in Melrose, Minnesota, and we're here to pick up our new boat, and we're gonna check out all the great things that are happening in the factory here. You know, Warrior Boats is a basically a custom-built boat. You know, it's amazing the hand craftsmanship that comes out of this facility. It's unbelievable, and you know, you guys, we've been running Warrior Boats for quite a long time. I can't imagine running another brand. It's a very superior boat. I love the way it's built, I love the way it rides, and I love the people. So you guys, come on in, let's check out what's going on here at Warrior Boats. Hey 
guys, we're gonna run over and I'm gonna show you guys exactly where we do all of our molds over at Karsten, Karsten's Industries over here. So let's go over there and check that out. And then we're gonna go through the plant there and you guys can see what all is happening here at Warrior Boats. Always something good happening in here. Hey, there's my boat right there. <laughs> I'm excited. So Todd, what do we have here? So this is the 238. Okay. Uh, we've got, uh, right now, they've got the uh, gel coat that goes on first. We, you, build, you build fiberglass bolts and fiberglass backwards. So you start with the paint. Paint's the first thing that goes down on the mold. He's got the gel coat down. Now he's got the first layer down. If you look at all the stripes and stuff, those will be your, your pin lines, your pin stripes, okay. and everything like that. So they'll go through and they'll take uh, certain sections off at a time in a certain order and stuff. So they'll get your pin stripes on there just the way you want them, uh, different colors. And in the very end, they'll uh, put a barrier coat on there. It's just a, a thick protective coat so that when we're doing our rolling over there, nothing goes down into the, into the gel. Okay. We build them as a set. So this, this is the deck that will match up with that hull. We build them on the same day together so that it's the same paint, so there's never any, any differences, variations between the paint. And how many different colors do we have now? Any idea? I mean, it just seems like every year I see more and more different color schemes. Yeah. Um, well, I think we have 12, 12, 12, 12 main options. 12 main options, yep. and then it's endless. Um, take those color variations. Mix build and what match. You, want. Yep. you can build whatever you want. Some people don't like the pinstripes on their boat, so they'll order it without pinstripes. Um, some people want wider ones, some people thinner, whatever. And, and I would say that's kind of a unique thing here is that you can basically, it's a custom boat, right? Yeah. And you can basically order it to what colors you want and what kind of pinstriping you want. That's the cool part about it, too. Exactly. And it's, you know, not, not even just the colors, it's all the accessories that they put on there and stuff you get whatever you want on there you can add extra seat bases you can whatever whatever you want we can do for you that's the part i love too is like i love to order my boat i want to put the you know what kind of motors i want and i want to put the electronics i want what kind of seat bases i want on it so when i receive the boat and you guys are i'm no different than you guys is that when i get the boat and it comes into the dealer it's it's ready to rock and roll like i don't have to do anything to it at all that's the part i love about what we do too is to be able to have the factory customize that boat for me so it's huge right yeah. Yeah. Well, you know one question i have for both of you guys and i'm very interested in knowing how this is all going you know, years ago, like a 125 was a big motor, right? Now we're running 450s, yep. and you start thinking about the difference in the weight on these motors. What have you guys done differently to these boats to make sure that they can handle, you know, obviously the, the initial weight of the motor itself, but the power too? Yeah. I mean, there, you, you had to make some changes. We've, we've stocked up, to, you know, we, the, the transom, obviously, you know, where that motor sits, that, that is such such an integral part of, of the, the whole thing and stuff. So we've added a lot of extra stuff in there. We've gone to a, uh, a special composite brand instead of, back in the day, they used to put wood on the back. I remember that, marine stuff, grade plywood. Green plywood. Green plywood yep. and stuff. We don't do that anymore. It's a special composite design, you know, to handle, to get wet all the time and everything. I always say to myself, where's it going to end when it comes to outboard engines, right? I mean, and, and it has, it wasn't that long ago that a 125, hate to tell you guys this, it wasn't that long ago when a 125 was a big, the big you were engine. The king of the water. Yeah, you were, yeah, right? Yeah. And now it's a 450s, and I just came from Florida. I could have swore I saw 500s or 600s, one of the yeah. two down there, right? Yeah. If you're thinking about buying a walleye boat, Definitely take one for a ride, and that's what's going to sell you on a Warrior brand boat. It's not new, it's a great family to be involved with. It's a custom boat. You know, we build just under 200 boats a year, you know, so they're not mass produced. We got a great team of people between Karstens and over here at Warrior. 
and these guys really take a lot of pride in what they do. It makes a huge difference, right? And when you're spending that kind of money on a boat, I wanna make sure that it rides good, I wanna make sure it holds together, and if anything does go wrong with it, I wanna make sure that they're gonna take it back and they're gonna fix any of the problems they have. And again, when you call Warrior here, you're not gonna get any answering machine. You're gonna be talking to a person, a live person, not AI, a live person, and they're gonna answer and take care of all the problems that you have here. Having a great reputation is what it's all about. So you guys, let's go check out a few more things. Let's jump in the truck and get back home because I'm gonna do a little bit more rigging my boat myself. I'm gonna throw all my gear in there. It's pretty much ready to go. And then it's game on. We're gonna be on the water. And we're gonna be doing some fishing. Hope you guys enjoyed this week's show. Again, I wanna thank Adam and I wanna thank all of our good friends up at Warrior Boats for building such an awesome boat. Hey, we like we do each and every week we want to thank all of our military men and women for the great service that they have given this country and continue to give this country along with all of our firefighters paramedics and no doubt all of our law enforcement agents hey everybody it is a great day to be alive god bless and we'll see you guys next week i do want to ask this perch a question quick before we let her go we're missing somebody in the boat today have you seen larry anywhere how would i know you know where you might be have you lost your mind I think he's catching sheep heads somewhere. Larry would be disappointed you're talking to a fish. Just let me go already. Whoa! Bring me your grandma. Now. Gross! See you later, girl. I just want to make it clear for everybody wondering that Perch did consent to that. Yeah, yeah. Dap me up, dog. Dap me up, dog. <laughs> Some good stuff right there, boys. Dom, you need something, you look like you need some jerky. I do need some jerky. We'll get you some jerky, Dom, don't worry. Well, tis the season. I think Excuse that me. one was a little excited to see me.